Warning, what you are about to hear goes against traditional romantic counsel expressed by friends, family, and Instagram memes and quotes. Open-mindedness is advised. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. And welcome to another edition of the Senate. I am your host, Neil Hoyt, joined by the other host, Derek Marshall, my brother from another mother, with his pink scarf, pink on Sorry. black. We all know That's what right. it's like. Y'all, you know. I don't know what it's like there. Let me know about it. Um, yeah, we're back at it again. Um, we, as usual, come to you every Tuesday and Thursday. We are the Senate, um, the Senate podcast. So tonight, uh, what is happening, as usual, what we do, uh, we play some music for you um, at about quarter to eight. We're going to play some music for you. And um, as usual, Derek, it's G Syndicate's music. We'll have Derek plug everything that, you would have heard where to find them, uh, where to go about, you know, seeking out their music, etc. So there you can go ahead and take it away. Yes, people, heal. Heal, heal, heal. Um, welcome to the Senate one more time. As always, I'm Derek Marshall, musical director, founder everything of G Syndicate. Uh, you can find us at gsyndicate6.com. Find us also on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter at gsyndicate 6 Check out all the information there, all the new music. Shout out to all the guys. Uh, as, as always, had a good rehearsal last night. So shout out Molly Waden, Mark, Brett, Antonio. Uh, really good stuff last night. We are actually preparing. we got something cooking up for you as well in terms of performance. So you can look out and listen out for that. We're really excited about doing that for you. And um, Talia is in the house early. Good to see you. Yeah, boy, Natalia and Natalia is here. Welcome, good night, welcome, Natalia. Welcome. You were Natalia. missed. You were missed. Jennifer, Thanks, good night, so Jennifer. Show the all the two uh, 37 ladies in the house. Mm-hmm. And um, we are here tonight. It's going to be good. I'm looking forward to this as always. Uh, always good to come and do these shows with you. Uh, how things on your end, man? How are you feeling? I'm good, you know. Um, to be honest, um, I had an amazing weekend. An amazing weekend, especially Saturday. Yeah, 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 we had a great day. Um, basically, a lot of reflection over the last week. Um, introspection is always good for the soul every now and then. Um, so, oh, gaining, gaining, gaining a lot of clarity where that is concerned and, you know, continuing to work on myself and make sure my mind is right and my emotions are in the right place and charting a way forward as best as I could. What about you? How is everything going with you? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm all right. I'm taking it all right. I, I didn't get to shave. Well, I'm sorry, not that I didn't get to shave. I chose not to shave um, coming into this week. I usually do the, the whole cleanup thing on Sunday, but I didn't I didn't feel like doing it. I felt like giving him a face and he had a little bit of rest on the razor. So my apologies to those in the chat who... I thought you were saying, raising the playoff beard. Yeah, thinking that I'm looking a little rusty or whatever. You um, sure that's the playoff beard? No, it's not the playoff beard. Um, but yeah, now that you've mentioned that, you know, big shout out. The New York Knicks are in the NBA hey. Conference. Praise Ja. Ja answers prayers for. Believe it. I prayed for this a couple of weeks ago. And God not only answered my prayer about us making the playoff, but he ensured that we retain the fourth seed. So mm. praises be bigger all the time. New York Knicks for life. Yeah, so I am so happy about that. But yeah, I don't want anybody to think that you know you're not getting the best version of me right now, or that something going on. I just growing out the locks or something like that. I just decided <laughs> to give the head um, a little bit of an ease for the razor all the time. And um, you know, all people say don't pray for prayer, so I've got a little bit of suffering going on in terms of the itchies every now and again. But I am still in good spirit. I am very lucid. I am ready for tonight's show and I okay. hope everybody in the chat is ready for tonight's show as well as always guys check us out right here on Facebook join the Senate page uh, the Senate podcast check us out on Instagram the Senate podcast 246 email us you can email us any of your submissions for topics you may want to do I get a lot of those privately but you can send them to the email not telling you don't WhatsApp me because you still can it's cool Senate in session at gmail.com 
and uh, on YouTube, the Senate podcast, you can um, check out the guys on YouTube as well. And the question for tonight is, I see Jennifer mm. and Dion laughing. I wonder what it is they're laughing. They're laughing at the Knicks, the Knicks, man, the Knicks. Uh, or, or the yeah. growing up, the locks, I ain't sure. They were going to clarify that for you. Either one is a bit of an insult to me, but hey, I'm in fantastic spirits. <laughs> so I'm just going to let that array slide off. My leave the hatters. Off. Yeah, leave the hatters, as my ma chuckle would say, you know what I mean? I am in a single, complicated, what does it say? A single, complicated, married, or entangled shirt. Sure. Because we're talking about relationships tonight. And the question is, are modern men and women really ready for serious long-term relationships or marriage? So let me just make sure that I am reading exactly, so that I give you exactly what it is I asked. Yeah? Are modern men, men and women ready for serious long-term relationships or marriage? Or are we really afraid of our own lack of relationship skills. Does that fear make us sub sabotage, as my mother Chuck always say, but sabotage any potential relationships? What are some of the things that you have done to deliberately sh sabotage or sabotage, as my mother say, a past relationship, right? Mm. So the question is, are we ready for serious long-term relationships and marriage we're talking will be hooking up you get a little thing on twitter on tinder you swipe left or right whichever it is i'm not sure which it is but you, you make that little swipe and everything organized boom 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 as the young people say it and then two nights eight done right you're not talking about that you're not even talking about a case where again you hook up with somebody and everything feeling sweet and woozy woozy for a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months, and then you know you get tired of one and then that fizzle out, right? Like a firecracker. We ain't talking about that. We're talking long term, serious relationships. Relationships that are a year plus. You know what I mean? When you start to really talk about uh, cohabitation or seeing each other exclusively, when you start talking about, you know, yeah buying and your purchasing, you're acquiring stuff together, right? Are we really ready for that? Um, Jimmy is saying he can't even comment the thing. The thing is a little too modern for him. It's probably a little like, too modern like Jimmy. for me. Welcome, Jimmy. Good to see you as always, my brother. Uh, I tried that thing, the thing for 24 hours. Not even 24 hours, probably six hours. Was it for me? I am keen to, to really... Um, try it out but it'll be more from a um a social experiment a social experiment perspective where you can really just do it to collect some data but but um I, it is the whole online dating thing has never really appealed to me mm -hmm. i don't know what for whatever reason but it's never been my thing you know um mm -hmm. but yeah are we ready neil so the first thing we need to know why the first thing we really need to know is what does the modern man and woman need to do to get ready or to be ready for that long-term uh, commitment, that long-term relationship? And it's always we can start with the men. Okay? Yeah, of course. We can start with the men because, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a little warm, right, guys? It's a little warm in here and it can get warmer. Right? You get warm. Because I might be a little controversial tonight in some of the things I say. Oh, it's a normal choosing. Like. <laughs> so it's a normal choosing. Right? So, yeah. Is the modern man ready? What does the modern man have to do to be ready? And I say that against the backdrop of the premise that the modern man, ladies and gentlemen, is the price. Let me let that sink in for two seconds. Let me, let me yes, repeat myself. Let me repeat myself. The modern man is the price. Now, ladies, I know you've been told all along that you are the price. Right? I get it. I understand that. You've, but 
we can we can deconstruct and strip away some of the myths that you may have been told down through the years so it can require a little bit of reprogramming on your part right understand the modern man well, the man is the price why do i say this let's look at it right i tell you every week most men got they can pick up the phone they got options to go left right down the middle if they want to right mm-hmm. and that's in terms of getting married yeah, or getting into a long-term relationship not long distance long term right we're not talking about somebody to come and beat out your brakes beat your brakes off you for a night or two that's not what we're talking ladies we're not talking that we're talking about the man who is going to invest time energy resources in a relationship with you that's what we're talking about now ladies you have said to us right you have said to us man you need to bring a certain level of job you need to look a certain way you need to have certain resources you need to have you drive everything in place otherwise because you ladies ain't looking at them up on the street you are that's the reality at least i hope not the ladies in the chat right no i'm not looking at the chat so lord knows what the ladies are saying right now we're gonna keep no, no, nothing, nothing nothing is um right? jimmy just said um uh, jimmy made a comment and jennifer just giving the eyes so okay nothing to nothing nothing right now jimmy said as you drink they need to do something or they need to do something our ancestors did think plan that's in reference to men all right so gentlemen are you ready for the woman you say you want what does this mean and what does it look like for the modern man so you got a couple questions to ask james are you a pleasant guy are you approachable i remember um for a long time i was told that i seemed rather aloof uh, unapproachable the same thing right the same thing has been said about me yeah i get that a lot i think i'm a pretty pleasant guy but clearly my um resting bitch face for want of another term uh, resting bastard face yes yeah, it's, it's um <laughs> off-putting so people call me aloof or unapproachable okay but i think most people that know me except for the people that say that you know i'm very egotistical and full of myself and all that and they'll say that whilst i fling my scarf over my shoulder um <laughs> and the people that say that i'm all aloof and egotistical and all those things they might think that i'm not a pleasant guy you go on show here tonight boy yeah you know what i mean but that's fine that's cool but i know that most people who know me and um they interact with often we generally say well, it's Malik Beer John. You know what I mean? This guy always ready to laugh. We've got a particularly dark sense of humor sometimes, but generally speaking, um, yeah, it could be, you know, a, a pretty cool, you know what I mean? Pretty easy going guy. That's me. So that's one, guys. Are you pleasant? Are you approachable? Are you a loofah standoffish? That's one of the things you need to check about yourself. Second thing. Are you in shape? And by in shape, guys, I don't mean round, because round is a shape. But are you guys in shape, right? When last have you done any running outside of running to the ice cream van, right? Or outside of running behind the garbage truck, right? When last have you engaged in any kind of physical activity, right? Ask yourself that. So you got to get yourself in shape. Then, there's both, and these are questions that you would ask for women as well. But this one doesn't really concern the women as much. It definitely concerns the men. Is your money right? Are you in a position to provide? Right? Are you in a position to provide for you, first and foremost? Because if you can't provide for yourself, you certainly can't provide for anybody else. So are you in a position to provide? Ask yourself that. Then the question is, do you want to provide? And understand that by providing, you're not only providing from a financial standpoint, that's definitely important because you can't be 
you can provide all your love in the world, but if people are hungry, they're hungry. You know what I mean? So you got to make sure you got your money right. You can provide keep, keep the food in the house. Keep your cupboards full, keep your light on, water on. Yeah? Keep your, make sure your rent paid. If you're in a position that you got to pay rent. Right? And then you still got to do the emotional bit. No. I know that that's weird to hear coming from me. Right? I was, there's a... <laughs> I, know I, was weird to it. I was right. waiting, but go ahead. Knowledge of self, you know, is the thing. Knowledge oh, of yeah, self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that's weird to hear coming from me. But uh, in terms of providing in, on an emotional level, my, my daughter gets that from me. She gets that emotional stuff from me. Sorry, not that it's a character trait that she gets from me. Definitely not, because my daughter is the most pleasant person, the happiest person on earth. On earth, right? Bar none. Even when you're quarreling with this child, she's just happy. You know what I mean? But that's another story for another time. But I make sure that I am there to provide that emotional support for her, right? So, yeah, I kind of max, you know, where she's concerned. So all the emotions, emotions go to her. That's just my thing, right? You got an interesting question, but I can leave that here. So don't. <laughs> yeah, you when, it, it. When, it, when, it's, when it's my turn, I, I can ask that question. No problem. So here's a critical question for you, Jenks, right? Moving on from the, the, your ability to provide. What is your purpose or mission in life? Mm -hmm. What is that overarching idea? That thing that makes you get up in the mornings and you say, you know what, that goal, I am pursuing this. I am chasing this. What is that for you? Right? It may be for you that you um, into construction or whatever. You want to, I don't know, have your own company up and running at a certain level. Shoot, for me, you need it, maybe this podcast. You know what I mean? That we want to move this podcast from here on Facebook to YouTube or another forum or whatever platform it is, it may be that, okay? But whatever it is, what is your mission in life? I didn't know some of you fellas in there have never asked yourself that question before. And some of you may have not have asked it, you'd be saying, yo, well, I ain't got no kind of um, mission, the purpose, the goal in life. Oh That's my sad. God! You know what I mean? Um, if that's the case, if that's the case, that's pretty sad. And you need to, but as long as you got life, you got, and you got breath, you got a chance, you know what I mean? So you yeah. can start today to think about what is it that I want to pursue in my life to get myself ready? Because here's this thing, right? Here's the, it asks what's your purpose or mission in life? Because if you don't have a mission, right guys? You don't have a mission guys there's no mission for the lady to be under supporting there is oh, nothing for her <laughs> let me use it let me use the curse word no there's nothing for her to submit to yeah she's not yep. under yep. any mission i literally got a, a, i literally got some talking points when it comes to this for sure um, yeah yeah, you could go ahead. When, 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 when are you? So I give you a lot to chew on here, right, guys? For now, this is the opening monologue, or if you want to call it that, right? So what is your purpose in life? And then, moving on from your purpose, or following on from your purpose, what does your friend circle look like? What does your friend circle look like? Remember, guys, you are a composite of the five people closest to you. Mm. So remember that. If you are you surrounded by duds, show her clear in the chat if she if she's there yet. Right? You know, she likes she likes to use the word the term duds. Duds. Right? So are you surrounded by duds, gentlemen? If you are, rest assured, you can probably be a dud too. Or you can be, even if you are on their level, you can be the king of the duds. And I don't, I don't think anybody in, in, the, in the Senate wants to be the king of the duds. So, 
you know, who do you have surrounding you? Look at your friend circle. If you go, I ain't telling you don't speak to your friends, huh? Don't get me wrong. I ain't tell you to sit cheese on bread. These men in the U.S. are going to get new friends. I'm not saying that to you. But if your friends ain't about nothing, don't expect that they are going to inspire you to greatness, inspire you to want to achieve anything in your particular endeavors. So you got to figure out what is their purpose and their mission in their life. They've got a group of friends that grow over there. You had a great um, line on Saturday. And everybody's striving for something. They're striving for fitness goals, or striving for business goals. They're striving for something, right? What are you striving for? And what is your friend circle striving for? Lots of things I think you need to ask yourself as a man, if you're preparing to get ready for a serious long-term relationship. And we, when I say the serious, I mean, we ain't talking about no hooking up. We ain't talking about no more next stars of flings. We're talking about in, in it for the long haul. All right. Mm. So over to you, my brother. I am, I'm going to, I'm going to punch up here. The next time you hear from me, we can talk about the ladies in a little bit, but let me, let me address some of these talking points here. No. Um, you know, it is amazing, right? It is amazing. We are having this conversation today, and it's amazing that you would have made certain comments uh, just now. Because um, I would say, when it comes to my purpose, is something that I, you know, like how to put it, I knew what I wanted to do, and I know what it was about. But to discern your purpose, like what are you here to do, right? As you say, what gets you out of bed every day. Um, you ask questions like, are you, are you ready for a long-term relationship? Are you a person that can provide um, all the leads, right? Emotionally, <laughs> financially, stability, all that. Um, it is interesting that you bring this up because, admittedly, I have come to a realization over the last week now. Um, early last week, I've had two, very, two people very close to me talk to me straight, talk to me plain and say, you know what? You, you say that you bought it, but you essentially let fear stop you from being about it, right? Essentially, one, one friend of mine said that I'm a coward, straight up. I mean, um, and that I kind of lean on certain challenges I have in my life um, as excuses and as crutches. Mm -hmm. I mean, at first, I was like, that's not true. But then when I thought about it, the, uh, both of them were right in terms of, I do have fear. No. Um, are you a pleasant person? I think I'm a pleasant person. I think that I'm a jovial person. The boy don't like to make people laugh like me. Um, I don't necessarily friends up with people I don't know or feel comfortable with. So I can understand why people may say that I'm aloof. Couple with the fact that my vocabulary, I don't use um, basic words, <laughs> but um, I have been told already that um, I am unapproachable. I have been told that I look unmannerly, I look conceited, um, and full of myself. But I think most of the people in this chat know me, and I am far from that. If you get to know me, if you really have a conversation with me, shoot, if you get me in a situation where I feel like letting my hair down, um, I, I think I'm a good thing, right? Um, in terms of providing, no, my finances are not where I want them to be, but I'm working on that. And that is going to come back toward my purpose, but stick a pin on that. So, but in terms of providing emotionally, uh, providing um, all of them leads outside of that, I think I'm attentive. Um, I think I'm all those things. Um, you go and you ask about your, per uh, well, in shape, um, luckily I've been blessed with a, pretty high metabolism, so I don't, I don't run to fat. Like, I am fat right now. This meal with a belly, right? Sorry, but some of us have our own struggles. Um, and I do want to start about working out. Know, I miss basketball. I miss basketball too. Me and Derek, Derek and I were, um, we, we, we were doing some swimming over the weekend on Saturday. And let me tell you, I had a stitch. I can't tell you the last time I had a stitch. Like, <laughs> literally, I cannot tell you the last time you know, I had a stitch. Um, but you know what? I can get my fitness in order and get my body right. 
Um, and then now to the purpose. Now, the reason why I bring up the conversation I had uh, last week with two people and then telling me very plainly and bluntly where I am and, and, and you know, me being a coward and that stuff like that is because, you know, I never really understood what purpose was. I thought purpose was, yeah, you want to do this, you do that. But I realized recently that your purpose is yours. It is you. It is on you. It is for you. It is basically you. Yes, you, you said it very, um, very broad based that what gets you out of bed when the morning comes. But really and truly for me, I realize that what is the thing that you prioritize the most emotionally, right, for you? Um, and I realized recently, like, especially like on Saturday and over the weekend and stuff like that, like, um, I don't prioritize, prioritize myself emotionally. And this, I think this is something that is very important for men and women to do. To prioritize yourself above everybody else emotionally. I'm not saying that you'd be a jerk about it or you, you know, move with a level of arrogance or, or, or lack of compassion and sympathy, but um, you have to make sure your emotions are in check and are right. And for a long time, I have put the emotions and, and placed expectations on myself to appease the people closest to me in my life. And you know, when this topic came up on the docket and we said we were going to do this, I thought it was very good because you talk about sabotage and me placing priority in other people's emotional uh, safety and happiness over my own has caused me to sabotage myself. And that and some other challenges has caused me to sabotage myself. And I am here to tell the men especially, but women can obviously take an ear and listen, is that you have to make sure that emotionally you are well, you are good, you are fulfilling your, your, your spirit, your emotions, you are balanced. Granted, life is like life is hard and life is not fair, right? Um, we are going to get bouncers every now and then. Shoot, some of us get bouncers every day. The point is, it is very important for you to maintain your frame and your balance and know who and what you're about exactly, right? So for me, it was like, look, I love content creation. That is me. That is what I love to do. I say that every week. Um, but in terms of other things that I like to keep me emotionally balanced when I can't do content creation every day or, or work toward that end, um, I need to start getting back into things that make me feel balanced. So men, women, Make sure that you're emotionally well. Listen to yourself. Try to be in tune with your body, mind, and spirit. Because if you can listen to yourself, if you can listen to what your soul craves for, your spirit craves for, I can get a little metaphysical here. If you could cry, if you can listen to what your being is calling for, then it will guide you into the places you need to be. And I thank those two people for telling me what they told me in the manner that uh, which they told me. And I am grateful for the weak. Of reflections that I have had, because it has it has put me in a space of understanding my adult life and some of the things I did wrong, especially in adapting as I went into transitioning from teenage years to adulthood, and then certain toxic behaviors and, and habits that I have for myself. So you have to be very cognizant, right? Because in a long term relationship, if you don't know who you are or what you're about, and you kind of all over the place with things like what's your purpose or you're all over the place with what you provide in all the leads. There's a lot of people believe providing financially is a done deal. Well, I know she crawling boat and here got enough food, the bills pay. What she, what she, what she, what she, what she <laughs> complaining about? And you got to know where you boat. You got, you got to have confidence for yourself of being a good person to be around. I think that's the way it is. You know, like, are you comfortable? Like, would you recommend yourself to somebody? Well, I recommend Neil Hoyt, like, to, uh, uh, like if, if I were part of, if I was a, a, a separate person from myself, if that makes sense, right? There were two of me. If we saw a woman, would I recommend to that woman to date me, right? And I would say that at this point, maybe, <laughs> I won't say wholesale yes, I won't say wholesale no, because there are things about me I need to work on. And, and, and literally, they have been hitting me within the last week. So there are some of us that understand that from very early on. Life has given them um, challenges 
if they had a boss up and understand who they are, what they are, maybe you were just in tune with yourself. Me, I go into that process now of understanding who and what I am and listening to what I really want within myself, like and my quiet moments, meditation, that kind of thing, right? So listen to yourself, listen to your being, listen to your heart, listen to your mind. Um, yes, you have to use a bit of logic, um, use a bit of discernment. But at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you to make you the best version of you. Um, so I agree with everything you're saying there. Um, the only thing I would say, mm, I don't know if I necessarily like the praising of a praise, like men are the praise. I think that within the context of a relationship, I think part of the reason why we inserted this problem that we in today in man versus woman is that we have assigned self-value to to the gender. So like women, I'm a diva, I'm a queen. Men like, yeah, I'm a king. We're the prize, we're the thing. The point is, is that everybody has value. And at the end of the day, you have to be humble within yourself to say the other person brings a level of value to your life. Yeah, don't, don't, by, by any means, don't don't lack confidence within yourself and say, shoot, I am I am the stuff. I bring a level of of value to any relationship, I mean, shoot, some people believe they bring value to any room, any situation that they're in. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with having self-confidence. Um, but you also have to look at it as if somebody brings value to your life, do not diminish that person's value, right? They're, they're, some people don't bring more value to a committed relationship than another person. You got to love yourself and you have to love people too. But against that backdrop, in terms of being a praise, a lot of us are looking at the value of other people and kind of trumping up ourselves or devaluing ourselves to give that person a further valuation within their status. If you understand what he's saying, like a lot of us going by the thing like, oh, shoot, I, shit, I'm the shit. I, oh, ooh, ah, right? Nobody can't step to me. Nobody ain't good enough, right? Nobody can't handle me. Nobody can't attack me. No, sweetheart. The point is, is that if you have that attitude about it, getting around that, because we talked about this before in a previous podcast, we ain't competing with people. We are not competing. Men do not love to compete with men in business, in sport, video games, and then come home to go compete with a partner too. We we can't battle the whole world. We want somebody <laughs> to battle with, right? Um, not against. But with that said, I agree with everything that you have said. I am in agreement with everything that you said. I want everybody to realize that you have to understand what your what your value is, what your purpose is, and how you can better yourself. Because if you're not in shape, you can't be expecting your partner to be in shape. You can't be vet, like you can't be obese, out of shape. You go up a flight of stairs, you huffing and puffing, and expect your partner to look like Thor or or like I don't know, even Mandy, I don't know uh, Beyonce or anything like that. You understand? You have to take accountability for yourself. Yes, that's what you may like. You may like slim, trim, fit, tight bodies, but you have to like that for yourself as well. And that is where I say I come back to being emotional, emotionally um, responsible for yourself and ensuring that you are where you are. Because if you're emotionally right, if in your head, your emotion, your spirit, everything going well, you can do for you. You can love yourself. You can take care of yourself. You can do the things for yourself. You can provide for yourself financially, provide for yourself emotionally, provide for yourself physically. Right? You can take care of your body. Watch what you eat. Watch where you work out. I mean, some of us struggle with it. Um, some of us, shoot, most of us do. You understand? We are not all perfect. Right? We shoot. Up to recently, I had to tell myself, I've been eating so much crap since this whole year and pandemic. As a matter of fact, this whole year, I've not taken care of myself. And I have decided to make a stance and take a stance. And this all hit me this last week. So I say all that to say. I approve this message. <laughs> Uncle. This is Uncle. Right. I approve this message. Right. So I just I just want people to understand, especially men, especially men, especially men. Because it is easy for us to get caught up in the back and forth with all oh, women feel this and men feel that and we always attack and we don't care what we yes, yes. Yes, men, there will be a space for us to confront certain things that are said about us and the thought process about us in, in, in public sphere. There will be a time to hold people accountable and to, to speak our truth, as they love that is, 
for truth. I don't like that statement either, but there will be a space for us to do that. But you know what? Before we do that, we got to look at ourselves. We have to look at ourselves and say, you know what? At the end of the day, yes, we have to fix the perception of men and the perspectives people have about men, but we also have to hold ourselves within that higher esteem too. We have to hold ourselves in the esteem like, you know what? Like Derek said, while I don't agree with the terminology, I understand what he's trying to say. I am a praise. I am somebody that I would recommend today. And if that is who you are, that is what you are about, then you could talk, you could, you could, you could, you could educate people. And I think that's where we start because while we may not be exactly where we want to be, Derek and myself, we know for sure that we are introspective men. We think a lot about where we are and where we're trying to be and how we're trying to get there. And it gives us a level of self-awareness and confidence to, to, to hold ourselves accountable and to want to hold other people accountable, men and women, right? So um, that's it. I see the chat going off. I don't know if you want to dive in the chat before you go on to women. Yeah, I, I definitely want to do that. Um, my, my thing is freaking out a little bit. Okay, I'm here. Natalia says, is it a functioning and cohesive relationship, the praise? We are the praise, well, to me. Um, I use that word to be a little bit incendiary, to be honest, because I do know that um, a lot of women think along those lines, I am the prize, I am the catch, right? Um, as a poor, when, when they look and see, well, let, let me not get into that. Um, so yeah, I was just trying to be a little bit incendiary there. Okay, just to um, touch on that a bit, Derek, just to touch on, back, on that. Um, yes, there is a problem where, again, I go back to saying that some people see themselves in such a high esteem and a high standard that they diminish potential partners and shoot, just people Correct. in general Correct. because they're not operating, they're as it perceived, not operating on their level. I'm not talking about um, you are a certain level taking care of yourself and somebody's not taking care of themselves to so you. They're not worthy of your time and effort. I'm talking about their like literally small things that people are written off for. Like, she ain't on my level, or she ain't on my level. She can never talk to me, and this and that. It's been really and truly, you have not given it a chance because you have this self-inflated ego about Correct. who you are. Correct. And again, and a lot of times it's, it's, it's a little bit misguided as well. It's not an accurate yes. impression of where you are within the grand scheme of things, right? Yes. So that's why I kind of use the word price because, you know, you know what I get sometimes. I um, Cheryl. Time, man. Cheryl is saying pink is your color, Derek. I approve of tonight, Shaw. Thank you so much. Swag, swag. God damn it. Um, Jimmy, the fact is people will call you whatever you, when they can't destroy your spirit. Yes. Um, well, my saying words of a pillar just flock together. That's a fact. As, as my man chocolate would say, doves display with doves. Clear <laughs> says, lay down with dolls, catch please. For sure. Natalia says, yes, me when that inner voice speaks, you got to listen. Cross is in the house. Welcome to you, Cross. Good night. Was about Cross. Say something simpler. Would you marry Sash, get into a long-term relationship with you? Eh. Eh. Not, you're not, you're not, you're not, uh, <laughs> the marriage thing. Eh. Development is good, but if you're waiting on perfect, everyone will be alone. And that's a fact, Jimmy. Um, agreed, like agreed, to, agreed, agreed. I like to thought, think about it as progress over perfection. Yes. Right? progress yeah. over perfection so mm -hmm. it's, it's a progress it's a progression thing you we are all working towards being the best version that doesn't mean that you're going to be a perfect version but it's going to be the best version right? and that's a daily grain that is correct. a daily grain correct can we see the amount of cutting in the house welcome to uh claire says love yourself in your beautiful imperfection door though i find that sometimes we are so hard on ourselves trying to improve that we forget that we are worthy of love even in our imperfect state. And that's a fact. Tanisha, a lot of that overinflated confidence is really just to hide a lack of self-confidence. I really, I, I need to come back to that because I want to use that as a segue to when they talk about the women, but that's another story. Um, Jimmy, I was told by a more mature brother, can you see yourself taking care of this person if they are ill? The fact is mm. long-term relationships should be entered with open eyes and unfortunately many people are paying too much attention to looking for the perfect person and miss the, oh lord have mercy and miss the perfect for them mm. yes jimmy it's all the things this is itx live i don't know if that has a fancy pronunciation so i'm just going to call it itx live welcome to you good night good night to naker you are good in night. the house good night, good night. 
uh, cross again, Neil. I love that you received criticism about your character. I took it as an opportunity to look deeper into yourself instead of getting defensive. That's an important skill to develop. Hold yes, on. Cross. Before, but 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 Tanisha, to be fair, before you congratulate me, um, I guess those people I've been having these criticisms before, and there were times I got defensive. I think what happened this time was the manner in which it was told to me. And the people that told it to me, I know it was coming from a place of love. I know it was coming from a place of wanting to, for me to be better. And it was real. Literally, it was rough. It was, it was direct, right? Um, I would also say that, um, touching on something Derek said before, about um, know your purpose and having those things in place to, to be um, submissive. Um, well, well, for people to be any partner, to, to, to follow or to... To, to accept the fact that you know where you're going and you're leading us in the right direction, it all starts with self. And it starts with, with whatever you're getting into. So, um, Tanisha, yes, I would say that, um, you know, it was from a place of love and it was, it was told to me in a very rough manner that it made me say, you know what, Neil? So many people have told you this over the years, um, from your family to, to lovers to friends. Everybody has told me these things. It is just that no one has ever put it across to me in such a manner that made me say, you know what, boy? It's got a point. Because you always, and that's another thing too, if you constantly find yourself in situations where you're told the same things over and over by different people, mm -hmm. whether it's, a, whether it's a thousand friends, a thousand friends, they can't be wrong. Right, can't so wrong. I think that was, the, that was the impetus for me to say, you know what, Neil, you got to start taking on that for sure. And it made me, it got me to thinking, so thanks for that. Yeah, man, that is, I, I found that that was important too, that you were able to receive and process what was being said and use it to, to go to another, to take a step in another direction, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, Kevin Seeley is a wise man once said to me, if it's your horn or bell, whose job is it to blow it or ring it? You can afford to ring it, but being humble is growth. Yes, celebrate mm. yourself, but you know, mm -hmm. so, so be cool yeah. with people, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And Cross is saying a lot of people still can't handle the truth from their people. And that's a fact. Um, sure. Good night to Renee Rollins Taylor in the house. The good night, Renee. Taylor, as she looks known as. She's <laughs> in the house. And uh, let me go back to that comment that uh, Tanisha made. Uh, a lot of that overinflated confidence is really just to hide a lack of self confidence. Yes, Cross has a bit of emotional intelligence there. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so let me tell you with the ladies. All right. right. Oh let boy. The ladies. I know when it's time to talk with the ladies. Let me let me, let me let me get my let me get my helmet. Yeah, let me get get into sexist <laughs> position. Because you know I, I get all big up big up big up big up spray on the misogyny. Yeah. We bring the misogyny and the sexism and the mm -hmm. patriarchy and all that stuff. So here we go. Ladies. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> it's a system. Um, are you willing to work for the man that you want? Let me ask again. Are you willing to work for the man you want? Don't expect that the man you want. Listen to what we're talking about here. The man that you want. We ain't talking about the average job law. We ain't talking about the man that is pick wilts. Somebody will tell you. You talking about the man you want, the man in your mind's eye that you want. Are you willing to work for him? Are you willing to work to get him? And what does that mean? And what does it look like for the modern woman? Right? So just like with the men, we got some questions to ask or to answer. Right? Are you pleasant? Are you approachable? Right? In this case, ladies, resting bitch face is not a thing. Okay? You're definitely in a positive trait. Your resting bitch face is not a thing. The man that you think you want, sorry, the man that you want, if you think that he, that is going to attract him, I am here tonight to tell you it won't. It won't. Right? You're going to forever take this, this first box here, so. Right? <laughs> so, are you good looking? That's question number two. And if you're, if you're not, you definitely got to be pleasant. 
So you, if it is yes to question number two, you definitely got to be yes to question number one. I love it. Like I keeping love it. it real. I, 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 I mean, real. I laugh at your delivery, but... Uh, yeah, right. okay. Yeah, I, I, I think it should be pleasant regardless, but... I think so too. But if, and shoot, and the third question, as I did for the men, are you in shape? No. When I ask that question, are you in shape? Within the West Indian context, we tend to like our women with a little bit more meat on the bones, right? right. That's how we get down both here in the Barbados and generally across the Caribbean, right? So, we don't really like to see a little sign, a little sign behind there. Roll and a whole lot of Okay. Yeah, we like that, you know, it's had a whole lot of squeeze, you know what I mean? We, we like that. We like that as men. Mm-hmm. However, y- y'all know there's a line you don't really like to cross, right? So are you in shape? And this is how I used to define in shape when I got on my fitness journey. Can I perform certain daily tasks and not need an asthma inhaler? So I used to think to myself, okay, if I had to run and catch a bus, could I run the 50 meters, not at a flat out sprint, but could I like, you know, a brisk little jog and get to the bus and then not spend the rest of the trip trying to recover while on the bus, all right? I ain't saying that you go to train to be an Olympic athlete. Shoot, I ain't trying to do that. You know what I mean? But you still need to be in a reasonable shape to carry out, to not only keep yourself in, in good health, but to carry out reasonable daily tasks. That's, that's the way I look at it, right? So are you in shape? If not, the answer to your first two questions needs to be yes. And if it ain't yes to number two, it, it got to be absolutely yes to number one. So are you pleasant? Are you good looking? Are you in shape? you got to take one of them and if you want to take it one it got to be an absolutely yes right so you know um eric lewis who i think is like one of the greatest poets of the barbados ever and some writers ever of the barbados show up the mad show the kid between eric lewis and the whole mad crew he had a song a couple of years ago you can't be ugly at our marley well, that applies here, ladies. Well, you okay. shouldn't be on Marley, period, but for sure you can't be ugly on Marley. Yeah. So, ladies, right here, right now, if you're trying to move into that category where you can take the married box or the long-term relationship box, you got to be pleasant in spades. Left home, the resting bitch face. Nobody want to see that there. Yeah. And if you ain't good looking, you definitely got to be pleasant. If you're in a shape, you're definitely going to be pleasant and good looking. All right. Next thing, ladies. Are you feminine? And by feminine, what do I mean? Do you want to compete with your partner? Do you want to boss your partner around? Are you the, the, the kind of female, woman, lady, whatever term you care to identify as? Are you the lady who's going to say, well, yeah, I'm making all your money in here, so you do X and Y? Or when the noise kicker in the house, you don't do nothing in here. Mind you, you if we do it, if, if if men do it, it's considered, um, what do you call it? Toxic masculinity. That's the term. A toxic masculinity. So, ladies, do you possess toxic femininity? Yeah? Mm-hmm. 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 Take the without term again there, Derek. Do you possess or display toxic femininity? That are is a you term. The person, are you the person in your household who is trying to be domineering? And trust me, I, I have been in a household where, and I would take that on the chin, I was not the man that I was supposed to be. And as such, my partner at the time became that personality, right? But don't forget, we ain't talking about the man that you don't want. Mm-mm. 
we talk about that man that you want that man you see you know this is how this man got everything in order he is the guy that i described earlier he in shape he pleasant he got money right he willing to provide all those things that is the guy you want in your life so and this is the guy you're trying to get so if you get into the, the opportunity if you get called up to the practice squad right you get called up to the practice squad you try to make this team and one have final fight. 12 you, you you try to you try to get into the but true you try to get into done with the rotation and you be the franchise player if you want to be that franchise player you gotta be more lady like than the other ladies and it comes back to no competing you just saying matching energies, yo. Yeah. Like, so here's men the got thing. the energy and women got the energy. Just here's the thing. Don't try to match mine. If, and I ain't gonna try to match yours. If the guy you want gotta ask you or beg you to be a little softer, and they can use softer for want of a better word, because they know they can come in the chat and tell me that why well, your woman gotta be soft and blah blah blah. Right? But if a man has to beg you or ask you, cajole you, persuade you, coax you into Joel. being a Love little it. softer, you ain't gonna be able to nail down that man. You won't be. Yeah? You are, ladies, don't forget it, you competing. The men gonna compete for you too, yeah. But you gotta compete for this man you want. Yep. So here's if the you, thing. If you do agree that you're a prize, believe you and me, the man that you're searching for and the man that you see, chances are he is a prize too. And so. you've got to compete. you got to compete. And here's the thing, ladies. Women outnumbering the men. And then we all subtract the men who go on an alternative like style, one. And then you got the men, too, who are deciding that they're going their own way. Yes, men going their own way is a thing. When you subtract those men, the men who stick a pin, men going their own way is a thing for those of you who don't know what that is. That's men who have decided that women is just too much headache. They will keep to themselves, spend the money for themselves, live their best life, and anything they want with regard to women will be sexual, it will be short term. So men going their own way is a thing. So when you rule out those guys, you rule out the alternative lifestyles guys, you realize now that the, the pool shrinks. What are you going to do to compete to get somebody from the pool? So we can crack on, right? We can crack on. Because only yesterday, yesterday, today, think yesterday. My good friend Kerry Holder, I'm not sure if Kerry is in the chat tonight, but Kerry tagged me in uh, a status from his wife, right? Stacy, shout out to Stacy. Uh, she was here a couple of weeks ago. I'm not sure if she's here tonight either. But shout out to <laughs> Dion. I love Dion. Yeah, shout out to the holders. We could get, we could get no idea. <laughs> yeah, um, let me see what Dion's saying because you know Dion good, dangerous. So let me see. But Dion. Dion, Dion, little bad minded. So. Yeah, they may doing bad all but it sells no deal. That's that's the truth. <laughs> and I'll tell you why, right? I'll tell you why. Before I go on to my story, my anecdote from Stacy and Kerry, right? What has happened, right? Is that men have come to recognize, you know, a lot of times women ask a man what it is he's bringing to the table. And then when they look at the women who are asking these questions, they're bringing precious little to the table themselves. So men have worked out, you know what? I could cook for myself, I could clean for myself because these we live in modern times, right? We live in modern times. Women have said point blank, they're cooking, they're cleaning, they're doing anything, and the things, those are traditional rules. And as such, men can do those things for themselves. When I was in my teenage years, my early teenage years, my mother, taught me to cook, clean, press. Um, my Aunt Bev showed up, Aunt Bev, for those of you who may know what we're talking Shoto about. Aunt Bev. Yeah, Aunt Bev would come across to show me how to cook certain things on my own. So I could cook clean, wash starch in there for myself. So the thing for me here now, 
outside of sex, what is it that you're bringing to me? Because your money is yours. I can't spend your money. Right? And a lot of men now are looking at it from that perspective. They're going their own way because they figure I could get a prostitute. Or I could go online, I could go on Tinder. Yeah, one night hook up and be done with that. Sure. You know some I mean? men some men some men saying that they could go and log into some porn hub yeah. and knock it out the self, you know, hire it and get it. Yep. Right? Some men have actually said, and you will hear this in Barbados a lot, they prefer to spend the $60. I hear that's a going rate. I don't know. But they prefer to spend the $60 up front, get that out of the way, as opposed to investing hundreds of dollars, carrying out a woman winning and then and then hoping that they'd be blessed with, you know, some female company, some flesh, right? So that's why really men going their own way, I think, comes up. But I have digressed. Let me get back on track. So yesterday, Kerry, my good friend Kerry Holder from Bassa Bassa Gym Show. Who Bassa Bassa? Bassa Kerry, Bassa Bassa. Kerry and Stacy, his wife. Kerry tagged me as Stacy's um, status. As Stacy was complaining, let me not say complaining. That's the wrong word to use. She was lamenting the point, the fact that somebody thought that because she's been married for so long, I think like 19 years or something like that. Shout out the holders again. Jesus, Lord. That is long. I mean, I know they were together long, but whoo. Yeah, yeah. As I'm not saying much more than me. Yeah, so I am confident in you more than that. Now that I think about it. Because I remember them being together from like school. But, you know, 19 years together, at least. So we're talking long term. And these are not 50 year olds, they're people together long term, right? Yeah. And she was lamenting the fact that somebody felt that she was disqualified from talking about single life because she herself has been married for so long. Yo. Let, me make, oh. let me not tell any lies. Let me not tell any lies on Stacey. Oh my let me make God. Make sure uh, that I, I got this. Yo. Don't pop, right? Oh, I got to talk right? about this, Derek. I got to let it so I got to talk no, about it. Don't worry. It. We can talk about it. We can talk about it. Oh, um, my yes, God. Yes, sure. Yeah, so apparently, this is what Stacey says, right? So apparently, because I've been in a long-term relationship and now married for a long time, precludes me from being a person to offer advice to people who are on the dating scene and hoping to be married. No. Ladies, ladies, if you wanted to know how to fix your car, would you come to me, the musician, would you go to Neil, the content creator? Or would you find a mechanic? Even if I was into mechanics and I learn off of YouTube, right? Would you come to me that got a YouTube degree? Neil, the podcaster. Or would you go to a legit mechanic who has done this stuff for a long time? Right? Ladies, what are your girlfriends telling you? Because in the co- in the post, they're burning me there. In the post, burning me out. <laughs> just hold, hold it down, dog. In the post, Stacy used the hashtag hashtag ask your better single friends for advice. Lord have mercy. I am saying, I th- I want to adopt that post for Stacy. Anybody in the chat, let Stacy know, right? Give she a shout out for me. Ask your bitter single friends for advice. What are your girlfriends telling you? If you want the man you want, you are going after that man you say you want. Ladies, you even got to start tuning out some of your girlfriends. I ain't telling you don't hang with them. I ain't telling you don't even entertain them, go for a couple of drinks with them or whatever. But what are they telling you? Remember this, right, ladies? Because I can see Neil, like, ready to explode like, on this particular topic. So I'm gonna pause. I got, ver- I got a verbal constipation. I got verbal yeah, constipation. I can see it. You're bursting. You're, just hold on a little bit longer. Hold on. So, ladies, right? Remember that misery loves company. Mm. Have you ever gone? Have you ever gone into? Because we got learned people in the chat. So, have you ever gone to class by yourself, late? Have you ever gone to a class late with somebody else? 
is a very different feeling when you got a little company. So it's one thing to get class late by yourself. It's another thing to get class late with somebody else. Suddenly you don't mind so much because you got a little company and when the door crack open in LT1 and you walk in, it ain't just you. It's you and two or three other people for the truth of the poor rate and everything is directed at you. Because, because the accountability, it can be said that, oh shoot, it was traffic, so two weeks come in late. But when yeah. it's only you, when it's, it's only you, you, it's only you. Yeah. So look at your girlfriends and them circle. Are they in relationships themselves? Ask yourself that. What is their motivation for trying to keep you single? Because here is the reality. And again, I forever going back to Beyonce. Right? Beyonce telling one of all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single, all ladies. The single ladies, put your hands up. And she's saying, she counted the hands up and saying, look at these goats here. When she's going to want to, she be your near husband. Tell me about tech me flaws and all. Yeah. And she's the epitome of flaws and all because here well, she might a man that horn she she says to beat the man and she's still ready. Yeah. Because she worked out in her brain. Sure, if I left Jay-Z here now, who are you gonna deal with? She can't cut to me or you, Neil, because I mean I yeah, mean she could my I would not me, me, me. if she were to be divorced and Beyonce decided to call upon lowly old me. Who am I? Yeah, yeah, but we ain't not give her that solace bracket. and comfort. No, no, we, 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 we ain't in that tax bracket to really be, you know, calling them kind of shots. Oh, hell right? no. So don't let your girlfriends, ladies, encourage you, gas you up. to be sitting down with them, celebrating Galentine's Day, February 14th. <laughs> Because everybody has gone up with a man, I told when to say, don't look at it, one of the face at Chambers. Drink it with a wine, bit a bit to be. And looking around, one of the, looking around the couples at the table. Look at them there, I'm, I'm bitter. Because you're saying, but look at he look. I bet he's he torn sheet. And then they, she holding his hand and all kind of thing. And then you girlfriend find a man and go along. I left you on you, what? All alone by her long so sound. You don't want that there. I don't want that for you. So ladies, do not let these, and that's the next thing, let me ask this one quick. How does social media factor into your relationship dynamic? Mm -hmm. Left of the social that. media. Oh don't my God. Validation there. God give it up. Oh my God. Not that easy, fam. Oh my God. Do <laughs> not let the social media validation take you away or get in between getting the validation that you should be getting or striving to get for your partner. That's the validation that should be mattering. Because guess what? A lot of these people that gave you this terrible advice to quote my friend Steve, my boy Steve, I think Steve in the chat tonight. Oh, Steve with IG and TikTok keeping them warm at night. The only warmth they get is from them Phone screen, two thirty-seven in the morning. When you roll you over, what? Are, you, are you scrolling? Scrolling, as opposed to using your finger to rub other things. You know what I mean? To scroll, to you scroll, same for a screen. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I got pause because you see they're bursting. So, so no. Go ahead, my brother. I am always due at least one rant per episode. I know, right? I know. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Like a rant. Yo, we need to stop getting on with this thing. Who qualifies you to say X, Y, or Z? Yeah? Particularly, especially when it comes to things that are learned and life experiences. We are not talking about specific skills. I understand Derek's analogy, and it, it holds true. You ain't gonna go to a plumber to find out what you're radiating and working. With that being said, we need to stop disqualifying people's arguments and points of view, when it, especially when it starts to hit home and hit true, by using the, well, what he know, or what she know, what qualifies them, what them know. 
look at two of them, they may got in a relationship, them horn dates, I know this about that. Who, who is she as a married woman to tell me how to date? She'd have married for 20 years, she don't know what he did. Yo, this is why, because it, it can come back to what Derek was saying about talking to your bitter friends, right? It's going to circle back to you are not going to listen to people that are talking some common sense. No matter where they come from, we shoot the fact that there and now you're not perfect and we've had failed relationships and we have with with children's mother and we have cheated before and they're divorced and I never get married and I single and they're saying the reason why all of these happen qualify us to say this this is what not to do. Because clearly we have done it. We try it this way, we try it that way, we try it our way, we try it up, we try it down, we shoot. That to me uniquely qualifies us to say, men, focus on your purpose. Women, be pleasant. You know, don't um, compete emotionally with energy because we have been there. We don't need a fancy degree in psychology. We don't need to be relationship gurus. We don't need to do, I don't know. The point is, is that while we do have an opinion and it is not fact, we are coming from a place of experiences, of life kicking in, we balls pretty hard. You understand? So to me, if you decide to take what we're saying or not take what we're saying, that is fine. But we don't want people to, to get to use the argument, what do they know? I don't mean me and there, I mean in general. What does this person know because they are not in it? What does this, you know how many times I heard about we, we, we need to know about being poor. We need to know about being hungry. You don't know my past. Me and my mother was reminiscing the other day talking about eating butter, 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 um, butter, 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 butter and macaroni, butter and macaroni, or butter and rice back in the day. What you call? We can't afford meat. You can't afford meat. You trust some rice. You trust some butter. You put that in a pot and see what come out. And you just want something to break the ear. So when people judge you based on who you are, what they think they know about you, I start to use that to say, oh, what he know, what she know, what, who's she to talk about, about dating? Stacey, who is she to talk about being single and dating when she has been married? She is uniquely qualified because she knows after 20 years what it takes to have a long-term committed relationship. You better listen to that woman. Because she knows why or what she had to sacrifice in order for their marriage to still work. She knows how hard she had to. She probably approached Carrie hard. She probably approached Carrie soft. They probably had arguments. They probably looked like the day talk for weeks. Days probably had years that they didn't like each other. But you know what? They are still married and they are still committed to each other. What does that mean? You don't think as a you think I'm a single man in my forties. You think I would not want to go to Kerry and say, boy, Kerry, boy, how do you do it? I have done that before. I have talked to men that have been married. I've talked to men that have been divorced. I've talked to men that get horned. I've talked to all types of men because I want to know what it's like. To... Well, I want to know. Right? I always say the day you stop learning is the day that you take your last breath. That is the last time you should ever say, I ain't open to learning. Call you dead. So we always get in this space of, oh, that person can't tell me nothing. Let them know about that. You can go and listen to Derek Jackson, though. You can go and listen to Steve Harvey, though. You can go and listen to Brandy Williams. You can go and listen to, to, to Oprah, who's a billionaire. And they're married. Yeah, okay, thanks. You don't understand. Them qualified because they got a talk show. But Steve, two, Harry, two, Steve Harry is married three or four times, huh? You understand? So we got to be careful with, one, where we get our information from, and two, not be close-minded to listen. Because they're not around listening to Steve Harvey, you know. They're not around listening to Wendy Williams or anything to hear what makes sense and what don't make sense within your brain. you got you got to take, because that's what Derek and I, we talked about this before. We listen to all, listen, we listen to all types of content. Bashing men, bashing women, trying to bridge the gap. We talk about, we listen to all types of content. And you know what we do? It's like going in the supermarket 
and picking it up in your car or saying, nah, not that that's too expensive, not that that look like that go off quick. Nah, that don't make sense. That's not value for money. That's what we do. And that is what life is about. That's what learning is about. They've got two ways to, do, to multiply. They've got long division, short division. You do what... You, so, so essentially, the people that's hit it with all types of manner of ways to teach in school, all manner of ways to come up with certain results, and you choose how to go in life and execute it, however you decide to do. So it don't make sense looking at people and saying, oh, that person ain't know what they're talking about on this and that next. Shoot. To me, to me, uh, Carrie's wife is uniquely qualified to tell you what you need to do as a woman to have a long-term relationship. And this way tell you, because men go and start checking men, and women go and start checking women. She starts to check women, I want to slap she in your face. We you know about that. You done married for 20 years. So who is, who is uniquely qualified? A woman that bitter, that got cats? That same that I mean, they come drinking wine, crying, sh- crying cause she ain't got no man, but coming out, we're calling girl, you know, that I had to, da, 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 I don't need no man, da, da, da. but when, two o'clock in March, two thirty-seven, come, she got tears and she, I cause she want a little, a little, just a, just a hug and a forehead kiss. You gotta stop this foolishness. We are all living life. Nobody don't know how to read it over because nobody has ever read it, read it over. Nobody ever get out of life alive. And we all learning. We have different, you see, they got the Bible, they got the Quran, they got Muslim, they got this, they got that, they got atheism, they got all types of different things to help us see a perspective of what life is about. What you decide to take from it, to live your best life for you, and to be a, 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 a kind person in life, to add to the value of life, that is what you hold on to. Please, shoot, none of we, none of we don't know the apostles. No, no, we don't know that the people that write the Bible, but a lot of people quote the scriptures and live by them daily. No, boy, don't say what he know, what he don't know what it is like to live in 2021. <laughs> because stop, stop the nonsense, stop the foolishness. And I'm tired of it. I am tired of people discrediting people to fit their narrative and, and justify their actions. Well, well buddy, you, 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 know, you know how it's get. So, it, you know, of course, you know, it would have kind of, Go on, little old hand. So here we go. In the chat, Kevin. Uh, uh, one more key point: people using love yourself is a fallback on me- for for mechanism. But people get lost in that because they can't separate or understand what loving yourself really in place. Yeah, Natalia, my resident bitch, face travels with me from school days. She isn't leaving because for the most part over the years, she has been really the idiots from my sphere. I okay. always remember Natalia smiling. So you're not fooling me, Natalia. I don't. I can't okay. see you with no. I never see you pissed off. I never see you resting, bitch. Man. Every time I remember your face, you'll be smiling. So don't come without yeah. me. For all sense, to be fair, real resting, bitch. Face tends to be something that isn't easily controlled by men or women. Then there's actual bitch face, for want of a better term, which is the one that people can be can be left at home. That one that can be left at home. Some people face just seems scary and they can't help it. At least that's what I think. As someone who gets laughed at when they try to look bitchy, I may be wrong. Good night, yeah, Philip. Welcome. I, I can't ask it to still looking. Yeah, Looking up. Tonight. That's right. You missed the scarf earlier. So Claire. Claire says, I don't know about Derek's three tier criteria. Seems a bit oh, disheartening. Yes, yes. I'm worried that raising girls to just aim at being smiley face pretty ladies with fine bodies in order to meet their partner is a bit backwards. Now, no. here's, the, here's the challenge. Here's the challenge. Here's I the disagree. Challenge. Here's the challenge. No way in there. Did I say that um it's three criteria? I didn't say that. So I ain't even getting um, bent out of shit with, with that um, oversimplification of what I said. Um, it's part of, those three things are part of, right? Also, with regard to that, uh, Dion saying, Dion wishes you can send the voice notes as this cross, and Tony is asking oh, the question. Oh, oh, oh. If, if y'all want to send a voice note, Ah, 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 let's try this out tonight. If anybody wants to send a voice note, um, you can go to the Senate. Um, you can message us via the Senate. Send your voice note. And if you don't mind, we can play it here. If you don't mind, we can play it on stream. Yeah? Um, we can so, try something new tonight. 
history. Yeah, yeah. Go to the Senate. Yeah, go to the Senate. Uh, part the, the part the page, and you can message us, send your voice note. I trust in people in here not to be ignorant to come in here. And, you know, I ain't really got I ain't got no facility right now to preview. Actually, yes, I do. Actually, but yeah, so you can go yeah. ahead and do that if anybody wants to. Right. So Tanya asked the question: If all women who are married meets meet the criteria, um, Natalia wishes she could send a voice note as well. All right, wait, um, wait. Time out, time out real quick. Time out real quick. To Claire's point, I know, I understand. You see, we, you, you made the point of, of, of you don't want to raise your, you don't, you don't think we should be raising women to be smiley face and, you know. We'll take Neil, we'll take Neil, we'll take Neil, we'll take, we'll take it. Mm -hmm. Ladies, here is the harsh reality, right? Here is the very harsh reality. I know you don't think that women, let me be very clear, right, that women should be, we should raise our, our girls to be smiley face, pretty ladies with fine bodies, right? And that's all they should be. I know you don't think that. I see men in this chat, what they prefer to look at. I see men in this chat, what they prefer to be with, right? Here's what it is. Here's what it is. I know, I know that ideally speaking, we would like to think that we are ever so evolved and that we are above certain things but men like certain things men want you want you to be pleasant above all above right. all men want you to be pleasant if you can't do that yeah so that is and that is only part of the yeah, jennifer what your mother is safe sorry there what your mother is safe jennifer Take care of your business. Okay, yeah, she's saying that her mother is not well. That's why she isn't listening. Okay. Um. Yes. Yeah, hope that that resolves. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we're hearing. Um. Well, wait. Hold on. Hold on, there. Hold on. Yeah. I don't necessarily agree with, with. I agree with what you're saying. I agree with what you're saying. But I don't think that that's the approach to that. That's not the response to that question because, in my mind, right. I don't know where we've got into society where we have to reconsider raising our, our, our women or any subsection of society not to be pleasant and not to be yeah. physically in their prime. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand. No, I, no, I understand the thinking behind it because you don't want anybody to be taken advantage of. We know that there's some men, there, there's a small subsection of men that are so gross that they would do very disgusting things. Right? But I still maintain, and I have always maintained, what is the sense of raising somebody to not smile, not to be polite? You understand? My parents raised me to be polite. My parents, well, they didn't raise me to smile and, and walk both things, but they taught me to be pleasant. They taught me to be, um, uh, to be, what's, what's the term, unarresting? You know, like, to be, if somebody engages me, I ain't gonna find it like, if a woman approached me that I have no interest in, you think I'd be like, granted, it is different for women. It is different for women. And I understand that. I can't even empathize with that. All I can do is sympathize. However, I still maintain that we cannot be going down this road of teaching our children to be standoffish and aggressive. Because what we'll, we'll be, we'll be putting out into the world Here's the thing, Neil. Here's the thing. Be pleasant. Um, be in shape. I think that that's as basic as it gets. That, I don't think that that's a. I don't think that that is, and that that's something you should be doing for you, not even for a man. You that ain't got nothing to do with approaching a man, cause there. I know they're saying that women men like and whatever like that, but women for real. Why wouldn't you want to be smiling, pleasant, in shape, fit for you? Okay, so let me crack on. You? Let me crack on here because you know, yeah, you, know yeah, yeah. you know we can get hype. So Tanisha yeah, yeah. so, so says, can we say men focus on your purpose and women also focus on your purpose? Because telling yeah. men to focus on purpose, but women just be pleasant greats the wrong way. I know I'm not trying to be all egalitarian here, though women are more than just pleasant. 
I'm just saying as all human beings, as human beings, we all should be focusing on bettering ourselves, striving to fulfill our purpose, and hopefully being ideal partners, if that's the goal, to be equally your people. Yes. I agree yes. with that. 100%. Nobody, nobody is not is saying to you, do not try to be the best version of yourself as a woman. But guess what? If you, because we are talking about, again, I ain't talking about the man's pick lips. You see, you want a certain man. You want a man to operate a certain way. You want a man to move a certain way. And remember, you're trying to compete. Ladies, if it's one thing you can do, you here to, um, Tonight or any other night, it's come and for want of a better term, bullshit you. I ain't gonna do it. Um, boozle hoodwink. Yeah. Uh, ha, everyone remember the term you will use. Dixie doodle. I ain't coming to Dixie doodle. Dixie doodle. Correct. Right. Be pleasant. Keep yourself in good health. I literally don't see anything wrong with being pleasant. I, 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 here's the thing, I right? legitimately don't see anything wrong with it. And here's the thing. I love the fact that. Um, Stacy, again, Kerry's wife, is the person that brought this up, right? As a person who's somebody who's been married for a very long time, right? Stacy is one of the most pleasant people you will ever meet. What? One of the most pleasant people you will ever meet. There is no accident that she and Kerry are still together. Yeah, that ain't luck. That ain't because a fool. That ain't it, a fool. Yeah. Rest assured, if she was miserable or unbearable, I decided, you know what, I just can't be bothered to be whatever. You think Kiri be there? You think she and Kiri still be together? As the song says, it can't be ugly and marley. Please do not go and tell Kiri or Stacy that I call I did, that I call her either of those things. I did not. Let's be very clear, right? But the fact that she is pleasant to a fault is not, and the fact that she is still married ain't a coincidence. I have right? no stance, man. Yeah, let me, let me let me go on, clear, uh, not clear. Um, Tanya saying she's in disbelief. Um, Tanya saying she's not listening to any of those people, Neil, but because you want a fit, pleasant looking, pleasant personality, woman who caters to a man in the hope of getting a man to marry her doesn't mean all men do. And if they do, then something is wrong because women would have to be clones and men aren't. So a couple of things says Dion. The question Derek asked about whether it, about what either says the brains the table are only to get you in the door. Those are the, those are the qualities you will see or notice up front for a long term relationship. You're going to need more than those pleasantries and the physical. Yeah. Yep. Greg, for he. I try to make Fergs. I think we're trying to address the egalitarian slant. You missed the base discussion. Many men have gotten distracted along the way and stray from their purpose. Well, yes, women also have the problem in my view, but generally more men with potential have suffered with this from this. In the case of women, a lot of women become unapproachable by being unpleasant. It's not about being pretty and smiley face, but basically a bitch for lack of the word. You know they're an idiot, so you all get smiles, says Natalia. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Uh, so as to that, Steve asks if it's really a defense mechanism. Uh, Tanisha, but literally the people who don't want to listen to grown folk in long-term relationships can't seriously want to be in a long-term relationship. So why waste energy there? We are a reflection of those we surround ourselves with. So really and truly, if they ain't ready, all oh well. Wow. Yeah, we address Jennifer already. All right. Uh, because they make it so serious all the time. He says, Natalia, how sore have the women you've been with? How sore have the women you've been with been for um for pleasant to be such an important criteria? I confused. Both parties should be kind of loving, not so. But here's the thing, Tanisha. You would like to think so. You would like to think really that both pleasant um, parties would be pleasant. But the harsh reality is a lot and a lot of men I'm certain in this chat could bear, bear that out. A lot of women aren't. A lot Hell of women are. No. Hell no. Right? And I think Toya asked the, um, no. the, the question earlier about, she, or made the comment about there are some very unpleasant um, women who are 
she, I think she said plain faced, out of shape women who are married, right? And that's fine. Yeah, married to whom? That's the question we need to ask. Married to whom? Right? Um, Dion asked, for, um, asked that same question. How do people flirt nowadays at Squaw? Seriously, social media, that's a fact. Liking pictures and sending DMs, another fact. No, they're not going to stop because it's really and truly very, very accurate. That's how the game plays no cross. I know you OT the game a little bit, but that's generally how it works. Mm. Okay, so here comes Renee Thomas. Good to see you, Renee. Good night, Renee. I understand to some extent what we were saying, guys, because it's something I talk to my nieces, 19 and 22, about all the time. People slash males speak to them, say hello, and they are so obnoxious and aggressive for no reason at all. Sucking their teeth and rolling their eggs, etc. Sometimes at just a hello. You know, you know, it's funny, right? <laughs> there was a day. So this was actually this year. Let me read this again. <laughs> Rene and Michelle says, I understand to some extent what you guys are, what you are saying, guys, because it's something I talk to my nieces, 19 and 22, two young ladies, about all the time. People slash males speak to them slash say hello, and they are so obnoxious and aggressive for no reason at all. Sucking their teeth and rolling their eyes, etc. Sometimes I just say hello. Again. Again. I don't come to this forum on Tuesday and Thursday night to bullshit wanna. I doesn't. <laughs> I comes to make sure that one understands how men see this thing. Exactly. So but. when he talks, right? When he talks, I ain't just coming and pulling things over the ear to come and but. tell one. This and. is how it's going down. Go this ahead, is how brother. we see it. And this is how we see it. I was going to may, may, may mention that um, a few weeks ago I was in Spikestone. And I can't remember. I think I was in a line waiting for something. And a young lady dropped something. She was alright looking. You know what I mean? Um, well put together, whatever. Uh, she was alright. But she dropped something. And she was moving forward. So me, being the kind man that I am, I pick up the thing. And they said, excuse me. And it was like, nah, mm-mm. And I was like, no, no you, you dropped shit. And she, like... It's almost like she, her reaction was me. Like, it was almost as if I was there, like, sweet girl, you know, want to give me that number, sweet girl. I literally just want to give her back yeah. her thing. I was like, no, no, excuse me. And I had, yeah. to, I had to, like, a couple of times say, um, no, no, excuse me. Because she, she had on earphones, too. I think she was in her phone. I was like, no, no, excuse me, but you dropped this. And she said, like, oh, oh, thank you, thank you very much. You know, I understand the defensive mechanism that people have to do. I, am, I know I understand that some men out there, just playing the numbers game, whistling and cat calling at, at people just to see what they could catch. And the percentage is really low. I really wish it would stop because to me, all it's doing is a bunch of things that are problematic, not only for other men, but for women as well. But at the end of the day, right, if we raise in, shoot, if we start to raise men, right, with the understanding that, shoot, men, got, men, men could do us a life, you know, men could this and men could that and men got options and you know, a man could flirt and do what he want and do what he want. He's to pop, uh, populate the earth. He got the seed, right? If we start to do that, right, then there would be a call for that is toxic. Shoot, I'm even coming. I'm not even going by a man woman thing. It is just a simple thing to teach your children to be polite, <laughs> not to be unmannerly and standoffish. I don't understand how that's a thing. Teaching your child to be fit in shape. Active, eat well. If you're, oh, I don't know who got children in here, who don't got children in here, right? But if you have a five year old child, I have a five year old son, uh, Derek's daughter is eight. Seven. Eight in a Seven. Right. Right? Now, if we were to come on here and say, yeah, boy, I teach him, I teach him, like Derek come and say, yeah, I teach him my daughter, you know, any man thought she don't smile up with them. Go on, go on, you know. If I were to come and tell you, yeah, is you know, my son, we don't go to the babies, might just sit down and watch TV and eat beer junk. Yeah. You ain't got I I ain't into the body standards and the, the, the whatever. Like, yo, you teach your child to be the best version of them, to be healthy, to be polite. And you hope that that permeates into adulthood. Why? Because as black people, as people in the Caribbean, as human beings, we are predisposed to certain things. High blood pressure, stress. 
high cholesterol, heart disease. Well, I don't understand why we, we, we've gotten to a part where we got to say things like they're not wrong with smiling and, and being polite or they're not wrong in, in being fit and, and taking care of your body. How we get into saying, oh, we want women to stand in line and just be like, like Stepford wise and smile and just mm-hmm. got the bubbies in the ear and ass out, and chest flat, I mean, chest, stomach flat. Like, no. There's nothing wrong in teaching your children to be the best they could be, be polite and, 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 and to take care of the body. What, what, where, what, how, how is that something not to tell a child? How, how, how can you say the opposite to that? How can you teach your child to not be polite, to not take care of the body? My father had me as a little man active every time. Then he left the picture, and because by the time he left, it was about 10, 11, that was in me to go and rumble, play cricket, play football, um, just rumble, play catcher, catch, sticky, all sorts of things. Rumble. And that's, that is what my father instilled in me, going to the beach and stuff like that. And you know what? As I said in the last week, I've been reflecting, and I went away from going out in nature and running around and stuff like that. Well, partly because of the pandemic, but also to doing things outdoors. I went away from that in my adult life, and I think that helped contribute to some of the challenges I have. I don't understand. Like, I, it boggles my mind how we get to a space where we got to be teaching our children not to be and do certain things that are basic, fundamental things we but, should all be doing. But, but that's the thing, Neil. You got to teach it, and and not only that, you have to teach it, but you're asking for it to be taught, and there's pushback. Like, yeah, why are you teaching your children to do that? And, the, and the, immediately I said, when I said that, and the, the response was essentially that I, we just want women to be trophy wives. No, that's not what we're saying. But these are the things that men look at. But you may not want it to be like that, but that is what it is. Well, man wants to hit his wagon to a woman that miserable today, standoffish today, unmannerly today, yeah. Um, in 20 years from now. No, Tanisha makes a quick comment. I agree politeness is important, but women also have to be so careful so often. I would, I would, I would, and this comes to a feeling that, because let's be honest, we are teaching, we are not being vigilant with our young boys to teach them how to treat women. Or shoot, not even not to, tr- not how not to treat women. Forget that. We oh. are teaching young boys bad behaviors. We, we, we showing them things like, you. I remember, so I got this bad habit, right? And I tried to get myself out of it because, again, I've been in this space of self-reflection. I used to be driving the road, see a woman, and I'd be like, you, I'm going to look good here. And I actually said, I caught myself doing it on Sunday. And I was like, why you do that? And I thought about it, and I know where I got it from. Because when I was at school, a man that I used to work with my mother used to drop me home. Like, I would go over to my mother's office, and she would ask this guy to just take me over to my grandmother's, Right? He would pick me up as he's driving. Every woman that passed, like, you, oh, she look good, boy. You, God bless she look good, yeah? <laughs> you don't just learn things out of your head. You don't just one day wake up and say, I can cat call with me. It comes from somewhere. So, it's a nurture, man. Yes. So we have to do a better job of raising our children. But I don't think the response, teacher, like, I'm sure Derek and his, uh, uh, Eden's mother, um, they're teaching Eden how to be cognizant and vigilant with their safety. But I sure they ain't telling them, well, you know, girl, you can't be out there and smile at everybody. It can't be. No, no. Falls on you deaf ears. no. You, you, you try to just be pleasant to everybody. It's, right. It's not disturbing just try, to me, but hey. Just honestly, you have to teach your children the counterbalance until the world fix itself, if it ever fix itself. We gotta teach the children counterbalance. There's nothing wrong in admiring an attractive woman, but don't be catcalling with me. Don't be gross with it. Don't be disrespectful with it. Talking about she parts and all sorts of things flat. Don't, don't be teaching your daughter. Don't don't try your don't don't be telling your daughter <laughs> Rocky. <laughs> don't, don't, be te- don't be telling your daughter, well, you know you can't smile up in the body, don't smile up in the body, don't be polite, don't get a body in the talk. Cause then no. I can tell you what, in the next 20, 30 years, when we go to the doctor office and a young girl come in there and don't say good morning, oh, Lord, these young people ain't got no manners nowadays. Back in my day, that is where it comes from. 
Go ahead, Derek. I, that was my second rant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Fergie is agreeing with Renee. He says exactly that happens to more people that care, more than people care to admit in, in terms of the younger being unpleasant. Toya asked the question, if being pleasant and uh, being in good health and having your stuff together made you a good candidate, then why are so many women single? I know so many pleasant, good-looking women with their stuff together and still single. Here is the thing. One, you got, well, sorry, you got a couple forces at play, right? A lot of men are aware of what they call the red pill movement and also the men going their own way movement. So men have come to realize that marriage is a, a bad deal for them. So that's one instance or one factor coming into play here. Men come in kind of realizing this ain't the best deal for me because if we enter in court, if I make any more money, I can go be the body that built the lawyers. I can be the body that go build the house and all that there. I can lose my house. Shoot the children even coming with me, they're going with her. I can go pay alimony. So them is things that men cons and those are real things for men to consider. So men have decided, you know what? I spend my money for me. If I want to um, get a little female entertainment, I will invest in that for a period. I check out Tinder, Bumble, whatever it is. Um, what is it called? Um, it's got a lot. Play, barrel of fish. Play, no. play, play, plenty of fish or something. So right. Like it is. Not barrel right, of fish. An, right? yeah. That's another one that we check out. And they just keep it trucking. So that's one factor. The other factor, Tony, that you probably haven't considered. <laughs> Christian <is> Mingle. <laughs> Christian Mingle, <laughs> you know, uh, is that these, <laughs> these ladies are pleasant to you, but what are they like in an actual relationship? So that's something that I would really like to know about. And because consumer can live with two different things. And friends, friend dynamic is very different from my woman dynamic. And you also have to look at the fact that, to add to what Derek is saying, yes, they may be polite, right? But when you... When, as a man, you go to approach them, or, or no, don't even go for that stance. There, it goes back to the sense of inflated ego, of saying, oh, my value is so high. There's nothing wrong. There are people that are egotistical, that are very polite. But when it comes to a certain, like, oh, you can't talk to me. Hmm. Hmm. Exactly. You're deserving my time of day. Look, look at you, you gray beard. Look at you, you pot belly. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That ain't gonna work me. Right? Um, and it and it and, it, and it, 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 it 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 comes from a space of again they're very polite people. You approach them at work or whatever, whatever, whatever. But they're always on this thing. I have this this unreachable standard, an unreachable standard. We got to be careful with that, people. There's nothing wrong with having standards, but we have to be very of setting that standard. Where you gotta be. Uh, you gotta be a pole vaulter to get over that yeah. wall. So across, no more looking at the cute guy who's checking you and batting an eyelid, choosing signs, passing and accidentally brushing by so you can smile at each other a little closer. Again, choosing, oh, choosing signs. All know the hugs and I still flirt with each other, so I confuse. But that is your reality, Cross. That is your reality. I love it. I love it, Cross. I love no it, Cross. I, I love it, Cross. I love no it, Cross. And you know, and you know. And you know what I respect about what she just said? She is married. And if I, I, I don't, I, 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 she married for a few years. And I'm still finding ways to keep it fresh. I love that. That is why I love. Cause it, because if I ever get married, I want that, you know. I want a night we out. I mean, go on dinner normal. Well, I understand your stance. But mm -hmm. How about, how about this? Here is a compromise. <laughs> how about a compromise? When we get in a committed long-term relationship, that could work. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right, a domestic situation. We get him, we get into that situation, and we go to dinner. I won't be able to say, "My friend, mango is somebody." Don't start <laughs> that. But exactly, exactly. You got to find ways to keep it uh, fresh. So um, there is flirting, but the flirting now has gone to sliding in the games. W Y D. Go yeah. ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go, uh, DTF, go ahead. you know, I discovered yeah, that yeah. one yesterday. But anyway, what is DTF? Yes. Down to F, you know? Yeah, so Cross says, yes, Stacy is lovely. Yes, um, Stacy is lovely. Um, the all welcomes Cross to old age. Omar says, even the ones that are trying to chat you up, come with an attitude, that's a fact. 
But, That's oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, oh, my goodness. Frost is saying she's sad to Renee's point. Renee, to, Steve says to Renee's point, I find they purposely look away until you pass just to avoid interaction. That is the gospel truth. I see that in the gym up to this evening. I see it every day. And here's the unfortunate part. It's even with the males as well. They just don't know how to communicate. They, they don't look you in the eye and speak directly to you. It's kind of like avoid the ear, the, 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 the eye contact. They speak generally to the, they come in and speak generally to the room. Hi, a general good evening. They don't look at anybody, you know. So that so that even but yeah, it is a female thing, but definitely it's a it seems to be a young people thing. But anyway, let me keep yeah. cracking. Cross, Cross been married for five years. Why well, sure the other right. day I saw? I mean, I know malicious in your business, but you know, social media being what it is. I sure I see the wedding pictures up to the other day, unless it was an anniversary. That was last year. Anyhow. So Blair is in the house. Welcome, Blair. Blair Good night, Blair. Blair. So brother. Blair's example, he says, correct, because to be rude is in style and they think it's cute. They do. Because, again, media, society has told these young women that they got to be a boss bitch. And that comes with certain behaviors. Right? Let me, let me I got a secret, right? Being a bitch is not sexy. Unless you're naked. No, no, not even then. True. But yeah, Tonya, but Renee, you find that generally in our age group, the women you know are like this. There are women in our age group like this, Tonya, a lot. More than you would believe. Uh, more than you would like to believe. There are a lot of them. But unfortunately for them, right, Tonya, what has happened to a lot of them is that reality is kind of set in when they realize that you know the options have dwindled nobody ain't taking them on without foolishness no more and yeah, that's, when like it, you know. to, that's when they try to come around and be pleasant but but then every, you already establish your reputation you already established that you are you are standoffish you so are manly. Um, and then what you revert to always right right uh, so to steve's point Dion is saying they could, it could be twofold. One, they could be rude, or two, they don't want to engage because of past experiences. I feel it's just a lack of confidence across. I mentioned earlier this in the show, right? Um, so, so, so I said what you're saying, okay? To Rene says, generally, we are not telling you, at least not the ones I associate with or know. Sadly, male women are sadly male women are overwhelmed with clowns who don't know how to approach women correctly, and mm. because of that fact, Blair, it now means that men who can't approach women correctly don't, because it's like, you know what? I don't want this woman to get the wrong impression, and now we live in a, an age where the slightest thing can be considered harassment. Men is like, you know what? I don't need that drama. You I know. keep to myself. Then you know how many years? This is like twenty years. You going to fat? I see how men get rejected you know, when they go for a little dance. I's a man. I ain't gonna dance behind nobody. Straight. Oh, you you gotta come right in front of me, and I go got two inches between me for me to understand you want me to dance you. Because I ain't want. Be, I never want to be the dark kind of man. I go for a little dance for a nice woman that look good, and she just give me the. Nah, I no sir, no sir. So, Cross, see who seems to be truly perplexed. My, my apologies to you, Cross. Is there a possibility that there's a bit of fear of the men being too forward or aggressive? Legit trying to make this sense of this because she her mind is blown. I know of situations of women who being followed after being polite to a man. It's unfortunate, but it makes you defensive to all approaches, sadly. And that is a real, sorry, that's a reality, right? One or two bad apples for the bunch, right? I've got a comment here, so I want um, address. Yeah. Uh, says, I see Tony. No, you go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead. We can yeah, get there, says it's twofold, but it's still a deterrent. It is. We just don't approach anymore. Tonya, um, I, I know there are some women who are like that, but on observation, I don't see the rule thing as a general thing. Because, but here's the thing, Tonya, you are seeing it as a female. The men are seeing it very differently. Um, Steve responds to Dion and said, Dion, I understood. 
but you could be missing out on so much because you're asking new people to unfairly pay for past mistakes of others. We talk about that all the time here, bleeding on people who didn't do anything. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. I agree, politeness is important, but women also have to be so careful so often. That's a fact. Yeah. Most would rather miss out than get stalked, and yes, it happens. Yes, it does. It does. It does, right? So men just, you know, be cool. Stay so correct. Can I take a no on that a just small time, and you may never recover. That's true. Uh, so what if you can't, Neil? Uh, Tonya, what if you have issues as many females do that prevent you from looking the part? Doesn't that negate you? Are you not worthy of marriage? Life isn't black and white. You're not oh. saying that. Hold on, she called my name. I, I think I, I deserve the right okay, to get first rap. Um, I tell you, the truth of the matter is, is that looking good is it is a subjective thing, right? Um, Derek, I am I know for a fact, especially some women that are are part of our um the, some of the two thirty seven ladies find Derek attractive. There are some of those two thirty seven that find me attractive. Like if you understand. Red man versus, you know, dark man versus ball head man versus people like what they like, right? Yeah. Um, and I tend to find that there is nothing wrong. God, I mean, what God give you in your face is what you got. Unless you got the money to get plastic surgery, to do whatever, to augment whatever, what you are born with in terms of your face, best you could do is keep your skin clean. You know, take care of your, your skin. As my mom there is, uh, said very early on in, in, in this journey. Um, also, too, there's nothing wrong in taking care of your body. You can look. You can be a two in your face. Men and women, you can be a two in your face. You can know within your face every morning that you get a brush your teeth. You, I am an ugly son of a so-and-so. I am not cute. As my mom there hit me with um, over the weekend, a cuteless. Cuteless. <laughs> right? Right? Cute free. You can be, you can be cute free. Right? But at the end of the day, how many ugly men we know that got abs? How many ugly women? How many ugly women will shoot up to up to this weekend? There, they were talking about a woman that you know she ain't look so good in she face, but the woman body on, and no man can dispute that. And to be honest, if you are, and that's the thing, right? To be honest, if you are a nice person, if you are a polite person. Oh, man, if you are uh, like, easy to get along with. Exactly. Unless you so so you're you're talking about a very rare thing that you look bad in your face, you, you look bad in your body, and you're unmarried. <laughs> Nobody want that combination. Nobody. Nobody. As when my dad said, you gotta check one of them boxes. Right? Nice if you know nice that one. if you know within yourself, are you looking in the mirror and say, cheese on bread, boy? I um oh my god. I gotta pay my cuteness bill. And you know. That your body is not the typical, you know, barrel chest, big breasts, double Ds, abs, big ass. If you know that those things are not there, regardless, you just gotta be polite. Regardless of if you are 10 or if you are 2, be pleasant. you should be pleasant. And you would find, right, a, a courtesy, being polite, will more than likely get you married. As a matter of fact, you're better looking when you smile. A lot of Yo. people. There are so many people who smile and it just turns. As far as the, the two into like a seven or eight, just by Listen, smiling. There is a woman that Derek and I both say is one of the three best looking women in Barbados, right? I know her on a particular level. And I would tell you, having interacted with her, having, ex having experiences with her, I would take a woman that is a, a four, shoot, I'd take a woman that is a two, or over this woman that is a top three, good looking woman in Barbados. I am just saying, uh, if you ask most men, men can look at, yes, men can look at that top three and say, yeah, boy, I, I can see myself married, that she look good. But when you start to realize, you talk this woman and this woman, vapid, and, 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 that's unpleasant. That's unpleasant to, like, you realize that, you Please. feel you feel drained interacting with this woman. You know many women that I, I have I have dated or talked to that look real good, but it just ain't last. I mean, two weeks, you know, it last two weeks. Got 
all of a sudden, she just unmarried and unpleasant. Nobody don't want to hitch the wagon to a house for you. Nobody want to see a house burning. I'm going to buy it. Nobody buys a burning house. Nobody buys a burning house. Rene, Rene says, agreed, but like a batsman, you should play each ball on its merit. And trust me, I understand that at times it's easier said than done. I am not impolite because I have true, I realize how truly silly that is, but I am weary. P.S. My mother did for me what I am doing for my nieces. Big up that. Pass it down, my true. Training yeah. child to yeah. school. Yeah. Uh, Tanya Sini is agreeing with um, Blair. Yeah. Tanisha, she's saying, okay, thank you for saying that. We feel to teach the boys. Essentially, as parents, we need to do better. I have another show to talk about that, but that's another story for another time. We can leave that where it is right now. Uh, right there. Uh, Dion said that's a fair point, but if every time you respond, it's a jackass. You make up your mind, you're done engaging. And that's fair, yes. Claire, yes, I think of people I know with conditions that automatically disqualify them. Tonight, and for me, too many misunderstandings. Um, okay, facts. Neil says Blair, these young boys are encouraged to engage with opposite sex in a very toxic way. It is sad. Yeah, that's that, that block mentality that coming through, right? Yeah. And that we that, that gangster mentality that is so pervasive and that we are now encouraging and yeah. promoting. Right? We've got a whole other set of that's a whole other dynamic going in, but I will say it. Let me say this. The music that you expose your children to is important as well, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Naked says this talking thing is so real, Taya. I'm always super polite, even to cat callers. I've been taught to be good, I think. <laughs> I don't regret uh, cat callers, but being super polite is awesome. I even know a puppet's calling women from numbers used to sign in at stores and rest awesome. Okay, that's, that's, that's crazy. Awesome. That's crazy stuff. Um, Tanya, everybody who looks unfit isn't not taught to be fit. Maybe they have these issues. But if you're looking for that only, then you might miss up on a great woman. But I guess if it's if it's I guess it's a man's choice if he doesn't want a woman with health issues. Um, thank you, Dion said gets to it before I do, right? Um, if it doesn't mean athletic, I assume that's what she, she means to say, putting the word mean. I am going to assume they mean someone looking after their health. Yes. Yes. And that's what Neil said um, earlier in the show. Nobody, uh, and, I, and I think I said it as well, I'm not asking you to be an Olympic athlete. I'm not, because I've, not that I say that, Lana Jones, an uh, Olympic athlete, I think that's her name, Lana Jones, she's 30 years old. In immaculate physical health. Akila Jones? Not, not Akila Jones. He's a U.S. Olympian. Oh, 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 okay. is, so, yes. 38 yeah. years old and a virgin. Can't even get there. Right? Can't even get there. And she is in perfect health. So, yeah, we ain't talking about athletic, but just making sure you keep yourself looking sort of it. Right? Yes, health is complicated for women. Yeah, we know that. We, we appreciate that. And again, we're not asking you to be an Olympic athlete. You gotta really put some time in uh, looking at yourself, looking, blah. Spend the time taking care and looking after yourself because it's only one you. It's only one you that you got to look after. You know what I mean? So don't don't rely on somebody else to look after you. You gotta look after yourself first, right? Um, Steve says, I believe your standards are keeping you single. Then in actuality, it's a barrier. That's a fact. For his hey. laughing at my response to long term committed relationships. Yeah. Cross say you gotta flirt with your boo and thing, that's right. Pull at each other and thing, how oh, you mean? This is five years married, yeah. Um Yeah, you gotta do their things, man. You gotta keep it going. Uh, shoot. If you don't pull at your husband, if you don't pull at you <laughs> if you don't pull at your woman. Yeah. Um <laughs> Dion says for sure, but the effort, the fact that you're committed to a purpose is what's important. I don't think anyone is discounting medical issues, and that's a fact, right? Exactly that, Dion. So, yeah, men would be missing out. Yeah, that's true. Why would they deal with bitch behavior and every October a new set of women graduating? That's why we must pour into it. <laughs> 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 love Claire's delivery. Uh. Gotta love their delivery. Women are jaded, yeah. 
I think they are. I think men are jaded too. Yep. Uh, honestly, Tony is saying, I honestly don't think that most men are looking past his visual, but that's just me. No, Hold on a minute. Let me, that, let me get this. Let me get this. Go ahead, buddy. Hold on a minute. When you first meet someone, right, Tonya, what do you see? Do you see their personality? Their politeness? You in a you 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 are in a bus. You are in a restaurant. You are at the supermarket. You are wherever you are. I had this discussion with somebody years ago about how people, how men are superficial. But we all are. That is why our sight, our entire. If you look at our environment, if you look at how we have built our society, it is visual based. There are signs everywhere. You understand? Know they warn us when places are wet. They, they tell us our society is predicated on sight. And our sight has, I was watching some documentary about why our eyes are where they are, whatever, whatever, because over time we have evolved to be like this, to make sure that we can see danger. We got like a peripheral vision of, I think, 160 or something like that, 140, right? And it, they're, they're in front of us and not like a, like a bird's on the sides of our head or whatever, because we have evolved to see. Because it's our primary sense. Therefore, if we go out, unless we had a meet and greet or something, if I see a woman across the room, I'm going to look at her. Then I may look and say, all right, she look good. She checked that box for me. Let me see how she interacts with people. But to fool ourselves that, that, that men, some men are only about the visual. I ain't going to like, that's, you know, what it is. But the fact to say or, or to make it seem that it is superficial to look at, at people and be first, the initial guidance is visual, that don't make sense. You eat with your eyes, man. Sense. You eat with your yeah. eyes. Um, sure. And Dion says more, most of us in looking past the pot belly. That's the truth. Facts on facts. Facts on facts on facts. Uh, Tony says they good looking past a lot and not six pack kind of gal. But as you, um, Tonya, there will be a lot, of guys, a lot of ladies up there that. Shoot, um, even my fingers. <laughs> I saw my he there saying that to the big belly man. So, Tony, so, 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 let me understand. Visually, for you, you would date any man? Any man? Now, you see, I am assuming that there is a certain um, you got, seat, listen, a certain, every, cellar, certain floor <laughs> that, that, uh, under which Tony will not go. i telling you. Yeah. Blair says, boy, I get rejected, cruel. That is called that does build your confidence though. But everybody in me, we need to teach our young boys to deal with rejection from early. It's part of life. You can get it. Um yeah. Tony says, Lee, you're not unmarried, you're ugly, just not fit looking. Okay, I hope that's not a big at you. It might be if it is. <laughs> um Wait, yeah. you read that again. That was what she said. You ain't unmarried or ugly. Just not fit looking. I I'm not certain if that maybe two statements are connected. You don't worry though. Wait till he's a bar member. Wait, what, 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 wait till the, wait, let me see, um, 2028 going to be a certain year of reunion. It's true. So, it's true. Wait, wait till then, Tonya. Are you on fit now? Sexist bar, remember? <laughs> Nick can say that's what the thing gets you in so much trouble. Some men creepy, true. And thankful for masks and goggles these days, Lord of mercy. Nick can say, uh, Tonya said, Nick can too smiley. And polite for sure. The honest thing, I'm not saying the man is a sick pack, but at the same time, I expect you to take care of yourself. It's like deportment that we were taught in school. Yeah, you go, you go look at self, you go look at self. Perky is a man who likes to laugh. I had to learn when, how, and where. Manners make it man and woman too, though. Facts. Facts on facts. Clear uh, facts. Most of young men are completely unaware of self and lack empathy within man to woman's situations. Um, Naker says, Fergie, anyone can protest that I am not unmannerly, but the things I've been told over the years make me very weary. I will say I've been afraid to speak to Naker for years. Oh, it's only as I'm but, older but, that, but, you know, Likewise, too. Likewise, too, but it is because she is a very blunt person. A very blunt. I don't think she's, she's not impolite, but as forthright as you can get. Right, and you may, you know, she may be a number, and, and from what I remember, um, she she don't hide her emotions, so if she's in a bad mood, and you say, hey, how you doing? Mm. But you're not impolite. 
I don't believe you're impolite. I, I actually think you're a very nice person, Nathan. Always thoughts. As do I, as do I. Um, Renee says Lana can't get a date or don't want a date. That seems odd. Um, the, the, the challenge that Lana has is that because she's no older, because she's like 38 years old, she has to make some adjustments to her standard. And it doesn't seem as if she's prepared to do that. And the fact that she's also a virgin at 38 years old, um, a lot of men are not signing up for that action. So, yeah, she she in a rock and a hard place. Fergie, I understand the struggle is what he was trying to communicate. Women have to temper how approachable they are, especially walking these streets. Tonya, someone might be visually pleasing for me, but I know and move on. It doesn't mean someone else in the room less good looking might not get my attention more. It's more of a vibe than a visage for me. Cool. Tanisha, I agree that most of us are visually attracted first, but there are some who are not. I believe it's called safe and sexual. They are sexually attracted to intelligence, not looks. Yeah. 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 Um, but something has to draw you in. Can't scare small children, Neil, but I'm pretty flexible. Lord have mercy. That is... They didn't expect that. They didn't get that. No, Derek says, um, Tanya. Or is it pansexual? One of those. No, no, no. Pansexual is a different... Sexual is, is correct. It's a sexual, that's an anecdote, anecdote for another thing. That's very different. <laughs> um, as Fergie says, no, not this one. So, Tony says, so I'm saying that the woman I was referring to was just unfit looking, not ugly and unpleasant. Okay, gotcha. I was in no refer- way referring to you. There, you would really think I would say that about Neil. I think you all know me better. I was hoping you would. It was very entertaining by the comment, but since you're yeah, he, he, he was just okay, instigating. Fine. He was just instigating. Um, well, yeah, that's regards of sort of sexual orientation. Correct. Cross. And had to do a quick Google because I forgot. Yes, Google is your friend. Use it. Nika, yes, you, my emotions are usually on my sleeve. Will say that has been tempered over time. Sad to hear I appeared unapproachable. Nah, man. I, I, I ain't got no bad awesome. memories about you, Nika. I have, I have seen you by the people. I have seen. Yes. <laughs> yes. I have seen <laughs> Like you were always polite to me, and we always, you know, we would have a laugh here and there. But I remember, yeah, and I would be like, I was like, we're not gonna put you on front street here. No, no, man, you good, you good, you good, you good, you good, you good. But if it helps you feel any better, I've been told I'm unapproachable for years. I've been told that I'm a mannerly, aloof, feel that I am God's gift to women, and I've been, I've heard it all. I've gotten that as well from some people that don't even know me. I took off my scarf, so I can't even fling it over my shoulder again. But um, so yeah, guys. Um, Lord have mercy. We we had a bit of a time there. I, I didn't even get to finish my points, but we at ten o'clock. So let me ask you a couple of quick questions, ladies. Are your girlfriend? Yeah, we touched on the girlfriends. Are they in relationships themselves? No. The the guy you're pursuing, the guy you're looking at. What does his friend circle look like? Is he surrounded by duds? Remember that he too will be a composite of the five people closest to him. Are they in their relationships themselves? And what is their purpose or mission? Right? What is their purpose or mission? Now, and it, because we gonna wrap up, but I can just leave these questions for you to, to really think about. And no more work. Yeah, so to kind of, you know, stimulate a little discussion in your own home with your partner, whatever. Are you easily frustrated with your, think of your past relationships? Are you easily frustrated? And how quickly do you want to throw in the towel on the relationship? These are things you need to look at and ask yourself when you talk, you're thinking about going into the modern sexual marketplace and you are looking to attract that good man, to attract that man. Uh, that you want, you've got your eyes on you thinking about. So these are the things you need to consider because these are the things that the, the men are going to consider. So you got to look at quick because shoot, if you, your longest relationship is three months, I don't and in all your lifetime, you 35 plus, and your longest relationship three months, you have no history of being in a committed long-term relationship. You've never flexed those muscles. And as such, you may really want to consider if that's something that you want to get involved in 
it's a, it is something you can be involved in, you know. So, sorry, if it's something that in which you can be involved, shout out Renee Thomas in the chat, right? So, you know, check it out. Really do a little bit of introspection. Here's a, a cool thing for you guys to try out, right? Go to your exes and do a little bit of a survey. What was it like to be in a relationship with me? Yeah? That would give you some introspection out of this world. Do that. Go and interview your exes, right? What was it like to be in a relationship? I've done that. I've done that. Yeah? What was it like to be in a relationship with me? You may be surprised some of the things you hear about yourself or learn about yourself. Um, yep. Like if, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> If you're ready for that small, <laughs> sure you can try. It. Uh, yeah, so if you're ready for that small, try. It, you know what I mean. Um, if not, I would suggest if you know that you can't hear, and please ask for an honest review. If you know you can't handle the honesty, don't go and do this, and then come and tell people that I encourage you. I and it, talking to you ex and they throwing a quarrel and a fighting like if we were still in a relationship right don't put that on me yeah um <laughs> yeah <laughs> Nick is cackling cross is saying I'm married to someone who has been told that too didn't stop my flirtage good stuff you know you know it's funny right I, I, I don't I know of um your husband cross and I have been told that about him too um, you know that people say I, I have no opinion one way or the other um, you know um, and it not stopping your flirtage right you gotta do what you gotta do if you see listen men and women if you see if you see a, if you see a prey if you see some prey go, go you, pray. and you got it and you cross as my tell you you know you see Next thing people about their prostrate and consolable after talking to their exes. It could happen because I mean, some of the stuff you may hear about yourself may be a little shocking. Um, but you may need to know. The yeah. ambient and approachable is amazing to me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I find that so difficult to believe. But I, I would say I would say about Dion, I would say about Dion to find an end would be hard. To find, to find, you know what I mean? Like, I can school you almost a game. Men that know how to approach women need an end. You know what I'm saying? Need an end. Right? Uh, you need a, it could be a talking point, it could be something you notice, but you need an end. I would say with Dion, it it would be hard to find an end with Dion. Because Dion <laughs> pretty much keeps her herself. So you can't really, you know? Anyhow, Natalia is out. She said it's a great discussion. So good night, Natalia. We're going to wrap up here now, too. Um, yep. As always, guys, it's been great. We had a great time tonight. Um, Thanks so much for the engagement. Discussion. Thank you for the engagement. As always, you put a little bit of pushback. Um, we really appreciate it. We love when you guys challenge our position and what we tell you and don't just accept it. So keep challenging. Keep bringing your, your talking points. Um, <laughs> that is so true right here. Um, yeah, so keep bringing your talking points, keep challenging us, be up for the discussion, you know what I mean? As always, follow the pages, like, share, subscribe, whatever, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, invite people to the discussions. We'll be talking again on Thursday. We saw a very interesting um, question asked. I'm kind of thinking about discussing it, but I, I want to get into a little bit more of that uh, first. Um, th just wrap it around my brain a little bit. Because we remember we asked at the top of the discussion about the ladies, are you going to, are you willing to work for what you want, for the man you want? And I saw the question asked, uh, bigger DJ Mali Fresh, he asked the question, ladies, would you propose to a man you wanted to marry? As opposed to waiting to be proposed to, and um, some a lot of the responses were very very interesting. They got Dion, she's who pointed me in that direction to to see that exchange, and um, I, I'm thinking that that is worthy of a discussion. So on Thursday, I'm thinking we will talk a little bit about that particular dynamic. Hopefully, it doesn't take up all the time in the discussion because I would love to get into 
another fan submission, another discussion, yeah, on another yeah. submission. So hopefully we can do, hopefully we can do the two things on Thursday. Hopefully we have enough time to do that. But yes. we'll see how it goes. So yeah, guys, thank you so much again. It's been great. Yep. I don't know if you got anything else to add. Yeah, thanks everybody for the engagement. <laughs> again. <laughs> um, yeah, loving the engagement, loving the community. Remember to tell your friends. Um, you know, Derek plugged the social media before. Um, like, follow, subscribe. Um, you know, tell, spread the word, share. Um, we, we're always appreciative of the engagement. We always appreciate being challenged. Uh, once you two don't mind being challenged as well, we don't have any problem having a discussion about things. Um, and yeah, we really do appreciate y'all. We do appreciate all of the perspectives that are coming our way so far. From the young, the old, the married, the single, the... Young, old, the little bikini. Stay tuned. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks a lot. Um, you know, as Derek would say, uh, follow, face, follow us on Facebook, The Senate Podcast, uh, YouTube, The Senate Podcast. Um, Instagram is at The Senate Podcast, 246, and email us, senateinsession at gmail.com. Send in anything you think that you would want us to discuss or give our opinions on as men or just as our individual, you know, thing. Because then I've also been told that we don't speak for all men. So, whatever. Just engage us. We are here. And they have right. the me. So, Derek, you know what to tell yeah, the people. Ladies and gents, as always, guys, I'm Derek. This is Neil. Be the best version of you for you. We are going to see you guys on Thursday. Yep, Thursday. Peace and peace and love, everybody. So come wind back for me. I wanna see if we got good chemistry. Come wind up for me.